Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. So let's start today's presentation with a question. What is a merit good? But more importantly than that, why are public sector organisations so important to their provision? And that's what today's presentation is all about. Public sector organisations. So what are we going to learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what a public sector organisation is. And after that, we're going to find out about the features of a public sector organisation. And then finally, we'll explore public sector economic policy. So what is a public sector organisation? Put simply, it's an organisation owned by either the government, local authority or local council. And these organisations provide essential services such as health, education, security and social care. So organisations that would be part of the public sector would include the NHS, the police, the Navy, the Army, public sector education, social care, libraries and parks. So unlike private sector organisations that charge for the goods and services they provide, public sector organisations such as the NHS, the police, the army, they don't charge for the service they provide to the public because they believe that those services such as education, health and social care enhance society. So as a consequence, governments provide these services free of charge, but that leaves us with a really interesting question. Because if these services aren't paid for when people use them, we have to ask, how are they financed? And how they're financed is through taxation. The government taxes people's incomes, businesses' profits, in order to raise money to pay for services such as education and health. So now we know who owns public sector organisations and we also know how they're financed. We can now turn to look at who runs and manages public sector organisations. How public sector organisations are run and managed is quite interesting. Because what we have is elected officials such as MPs, or MSPs who oversee the activities of organisations such as the NHS and the police. But actually who runs them or manages them on a day-to-day -day basis are the people in those organisations such as head teachers or chief constables in a police force or hospital managers. These are the people that manage these organisations on a day-to-day -day basis. And these people, collectively, are called civil servants. OK, let's now move on to look at what public sector economic policy is. Public sector economic policy describes all the measures a government puts in place to support its economy and help it prosper so that people and businesses feel better off. Put simply, economic policy is used to encourage economic growth but also to minimise the negative effects of recessions, such as unemployment and reduced living standards. OK, let's now turn to look at the two main policies that governments use by first asking, what is fiscal policy? Fiscal policy describes a set of measures that a government can use to influence how an economy is performing. In general, there are two main ways in which this can be done. First, it can alter its level of spending on projects such as building roads, hospitals and schools. This can be really beneficial because if it increases its spending in these areas, the organisations contracted to complete the work will take on new staff, which reduces unemployment. Better yet though, because those newly employed workers now have more money, they will increase their own spending, which stimulates further economic growth. In fact, a similar effect can be achieved by a government using its second fiscal measure, which is to alter tax rates. 
For example, by reducing income tax and corporation tax rates, people and companies will have more money to spend and invest in the economy. This can have a really positive effect because if people are spending more and organisations are investing in developing their businesses, it will stimulate economic growth and create more jobs. However, as much as fiscal policy can have a positive effect, it also needs to be remembered that if government spending is cut or taxation rates increased, that this would draw money out of an economy and have a detrimental effect on growth. Given this, most governments would only use fiscal policy in this way if an economy was overheating and rising inflation was being generated rather than economic growth. In fact, if this were the case, another public sector policy may also be used as well, which we will look at now by asking what is monetary policy? Monetary policy describes a range of measures that are used to manage inflation and the level of demand in an economy. How it works is the UK government first sets an inflation target, the rate at which it would like prices to rise so that demand is stimulated but the economy does not overheat. From here, the UK central bank, called the Bank of England, is tasked with managing interest rates the rate at which high street banks lend to individuals and businesses to ensure the inflation target is achieved. As such, if inflation is below the target, the Bank of England will decrease its base rate to persuade high street banks to offer cheaper loans, which encourages people and businesses to borrow money, which they will then spend on products or investing in new machinery. This, of course, stimulates inflation as prices rise because businesses see an increase in sales. And this then encourages them to take on more staff to meet this higher demand, which therefore has the added benefit of reducing unemployment. However, if the opposite is the case and inflation is too high, the Bank of England will increase interest rates, which increases the cost of borrowing, which then puts individuals and businesses off taking out loans meaning spending levels will fall. As a result, organisations will see a reduction in sales, which will persuade them to cut prices to get rid of inventory, which will reduce inflation. However, the Bank of England must be careful not to increase the base rate too high, because if people and businesses cut their spending too much, organisations may reduce how much they produce and therefore may lay off some staff which would have a negative impact on economic growth and employment. So what did we learn today? Well, first of all, we found out what a public sector organisation is. And then we went on to identify the features of public sector organisations. And then finally, we explored public sector economic policy. At the beginning, you remember that we said, what is a merit good? And more importantly, we said we were going to show how the public sector are so important to the provision of merit goods. Well, merit goods are goods which enhance society. And they would include things like education and health. If you educate the public, you keep them healthy, then that's better for society. However, the problem with merit goods is, if you had to pay for them when you used them, Lots of people wouldn't be able to afford it and therefore would under-consume those products. In other words, they wouldn't be very healthy, they wouldn't be very educated. And that's bad for society. And that's where the public sector comes in. If the government realises that these goods are important for society, then they decide we're going to provide education, health, free of charge so that everybody can access it, so everybody can get the opportunity that comes from being educated, from being healthy. Put simply, merit goods are a way of redistributing opportunity, giving everybody a chance to be successful. 